Okay, continuing on today with our Laplace transform playlist, we have here the Laplace transform of the convolution of t and e to the minus t. Okay, now to get started with this, the first thing I need to bring up is this convolution symbol, this thing here. This is not multiplication, so this is not the same as t times e to the minus t. And the convolution comes up a lot with Laplace transforms because we do have a really nice and useful formula for this. And what I actually wanted to do is show how this works through a relatively simple example. So to get started with this, what we really need to figure out is what does this mean? What is this convolution of two functions? Well, let's just look at the definition for the convolution. Okay, so we have our definition right here, and it is kind of similar to multiplication, right? Because we're just multiplying the, these two functions within an integral, but one of them is shifted. So we integrate it under another variable. In this case, we'll call it v, and we have to have one of them shifted. But then we integrate it with one of our bounds as t, so we're still going to get back a function in t for this thing. And so I think maybe the best way to get used to this is just to use it on the example we have right here. So let's calculate this. So let's calculate this thing for the convolution of t and e to the minus t. So we'll integrate this thing from zero to t. We'll let this first, we'll let the t just be our f of t, and then we'll let e to the minus t be our g of t, but we could choose it either way and it's not gonna matter. So taking our f of t and shifting it with this input t minus v, this piece is gonna just become t minus v. And then taking our g of t and writing it in v, this is just gonna become e to the minus v dv. And then so from here, what I can do is split this into two integrals. So for this first one, we'll have t distributing into the e minus v, but t with respect to v is just a constant. So I'm gonna bring it out front of the integral and write it like this. And for the second integral, we're distributing the minus v here. So we're gonna have minus integral from zero to t of v e minus v dv. Now this is gonna be easy and this is gonna be okay with integration by parts. So let's just do integration by parts on this really quick up here with the di method. So we're gonna, I'm gonna differentiate v and integrate e minus v. And so we'll create three rows. So we'll differentiate v to one and then differentiate again. Derivative of one is just zero. Integral of e minus v is minus e minus v. Integrating again is just e minus v. So for this, we'll have part of our solution on the diagonals. So the last row is a zero, so we're not gonna worry about integrating zero. So integrating here, we're gonna get e minus v, but we need to take a minus out front here. And then here we'll have our minus sign, and then we'll just copy down from the diagonals. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna factor out a minus e minus v, because we have that in both terms. And then we're gonna have what's left is gonna be just v plus one. And then all we need to do is evaluate this whole thing from zero to t. But then minus times minus is plus, so we can simplify this a little bit. And then I can actually like eliminate one set of parentheses. So now evaluating this first at t, we're gonna have minus t, e minus t here, plus e again minus t, and this is gonna become t plus one. Then minus, we plug in zero here for the v, so e to the zero is just one, so this is gonna give me a minus t here. Again, e to the zero is just one. Then plugging a zero in here, zero plus one is just a one right here. Okay, so let's see if I can simplify this whole thing. So the first term we're gonna have our minus two e minus t. I don't wanna run out of space though. Then distributing in here, we're gonna have t e minus t, and then one times e minus t, so we're gonna have e minus t. Minus times minus here is a plus t. Minus times one is just minus one. But then these terms here cancel. And so for this convolution of t and e to the minus t, we just get e minus t plus t minus one. But now we haven't really done anything yet because all we did was find the convolution. Now we need to take this and put this back in our Laplace transform and figure out what the Laplace transform of this thing is. Okay, so now that we've done the convolution of this and inputted the result, we just need to take the Laplace transform of this thing. And this is actually a pretty straightforward Laplace transform. One formula I'll give for this is we have for the Laplace of EAT, the formula we have for this is one over S minus A. So going ahead with this, I actually should split this up into three separate terms. We could just do it on the fly, but I just want to make it clear. So I'm going to split this into three Laplace transforms on the plus and minus sign. So where the second one's going to be Laplace of t, and then minus just the Laplace of one. And, and so for this first one, we'll use this formula where our a value is just minus one. So this is going to be one over s plus one using this. Laplace transform of t is going to be just one over s squared. And Laplace transform of one, that's just going to be one over s. And then I'll get a common denominator for this thing. So for the first term, I'll multiply by s squared here. For this one, I'll multiply by s plus one. Here, I'll do something sneaky like that. And multiply by s plus one over s plus one here. And then here, I need to multiply by s times s plus one. Now let's see, when I put this all together, our denominator is gonna be just s squared times s plus one. 
And then we just need to combine all the numerators. So this is gonna give me S squared plus S plus one with that term. And then here, I'm gonna distribute this in. We're gonna have minus S squared minus S, but then S squareds are gonna cancel. S is gonna cancel. So what we're left with for this thing is just gonna be one over S squared times S plus one. Okay, so now we have our solution to this Laplace transform, but let's look into this a little bit more. So looking at this solution, I could actually just subtly rewrite it just a little bit and write this as one over S squared times one over S plus one. And that rewrite seems kind of pointless, right? But what I wanna show is if we just look at the Laplace transform of this first term, T, we just did that like five seconds ago with the Laplace transform of T is one over S squared. And then for the second piece, the Laplace transform of e to the minus t is one over s plus one. That's another one we did like five seconds ago. So what you'll notice is in our solution, the Laplace transform of the first piece is right there. And then we multiply it by the Laplace transform of the second piece. So it turns out that we have a nice formula for the Laplace transform of the convolution. We didn't need to do all that work. We don't need to integrate it out every time. We can just jump to the solution. We can just use the formula for this and express the Laplace transform of the convolution in terms of the product of their Laplace transforms. So let's just look at that formula really quick. Okay, so here's our formula just showing what we did here that the Laplace transform of the convolution just gives us the product of the two Laplace transforms. But where this could be even more useful is with differential equations. Because if I take the Laplace inverse on both sides here, well then on the left side, we're just gonna have this f of t convoluted with g of t. So what we end up with for a formula for the inverse, we can say the Laplace inverse of big F of s times big g of s, this is just gonna be f of t convoluted with g of t. And as we saw in previous examples with differential equations, we always end up with an inverse at the end of the problem. So if we, just taking this for example, if at the end of our differential equation, we ended up needing the Laplace inverse of this thing, as long as we can express this as two Laplace transforms we know, like we can here, we can just do the inverse on each of them and write what we know that this is t times the convolution of e to the minus t. So it turns out this is a good way to get the Laplace inverses of some more complicated things where we don't necessarily have a formula for the whole thing. Like we didn't really, we don't really, we don't really know the formula for this as it is, but if we separate it out into the product, then we have something we know how to do. And then in some cases you can just use this as the solution to your differential equation, or you can go ahead and do the integral and put it in that form. Anyway, that's all for the convolution. More Laplace transforms coming in the next video. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.